Hello, welcome. Yes, everybody, please get seated. Come around. Can you make sure that, yes, there's no one loitering outside. Very good. There's no need to look concerned. I promise you everything we're doing is completely legal, not treasonous at all. Well, my husband, the king, is aware of these meetings that I have sometimes. Oh, he very much respects me as a woman and as a scholar and as a writer as well, <laughs> but we'll get to that. Yes, he, well, I think that part of the reason why he was so drawn to me not only that I'm a mature woman, unlike his unfortunate last wife, but that I, I can have and carry these intellectual conversations, these debates full of zeal and passion. Admittedly, uh, there was a time when I maybe went a little too far, but I assured my husband, the king, that I only discuss these things to take the pain off that terrible, terrible ulcer in his leg. And he did forgive me, although it was certainly a close call. But never mind, I don't want anyone to be concerned or worried. This is a place of free thought, where us women can get together and discuss religion freely, without any concern of prosecution. Doesn't that sound nice? Now I... I do like to be careful about who's loitering outside. As you know, there are, well, some people, including the wonderful Lady Mary. Yes, indeed, it is technically Princess Mary now. <laughs> well, it was me who nudged Henry along to make the Act of Secession a full and proven bill. Well, now Mary and her wonderful sweet sister Elizabeth are back in the line of secession for the throne. Of course, God willing, Edward will be the next king, and I'm sure nothing terrible will befall him, of course. I love Edward. Edward and Elizabeth are so bright, bright shining jewels who just love to learn about the new religion, the true faith. Mary is a sweet soul, and I care for her very much. I've known her since she was a little girl, but she's very, very much a true Catholic. And I would not dissuade her from her mother's religion for anything in the world, but unfortunately, when it comes to religious policy, we don't quite see eye to eye. Though it's not Mary, I fear, no. There are other... Catholics and papists all throughout court who constantly seek my demise, but I am in the king's favor, and I have all of you collected with me today, so truly there's nothing to worry about. And as a special treat, I'm sure some of you have noticed, we have Anne Askey right here. Hello, Anne. Yes, Anne has been such a strong person in our journey, our little mini religious rebellion of spreading the true faith. Can you believe the things, the money, the greed, the corruption of the Catholic Church? I'm so glad that we've separated. We have our own Church of England with my husband, King Henry, as head of the church, as it should be. Now I see many of you have the books I asked you to bring. Yes, Psalms or Prayers. As you know, it was released anonymously, but as many of you in the circle know, I myself wrote that book. I wanted to publish it under my name, but times were still a little uncertain then. But the newest book I just published, I see most of you have it here, Prayers or Meditations, that has been published under my name. Who would have thought a woman, even if she is a queen, have a book published publicly for all of England to see. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm quite proud of myself, I can't lie, but I'm also proud of each and every one of you for joining me today so we can have these scholarly discussions, 
talk about reform. There's even more reform to be done. There's still corruption in the church. There are still those who say you have to pay your way into heaven, kneeling and crawling to the cross, wearing hair shirts and self-flagellation. Well, I am glad to let everyone know that those dark days are gone. Yes, in this court, in this country, we are now of the new religion. We are free from those bonds that held us back, from corrupt priests and bishops and cardinals and popes. Here in England, we can read the Bible in English. Isn't that incredible? We can discuss the hymns. We can debate. Well, maybe not in front of the king, but in the safe circle, we can debate the different findings we have. As many of you know, I strongly believe in justification by faith. And not everyone will agree with me. I can think of a few people in this court itself, royals even, though certainly not a queen. Oh yes, they strongly disagree with me. So much they would try to cause my demise. But I have to stand strong with justification by faith. There's no worldly needs that need to be done. Of course, charity is wonderful, and it's always lovely to give back. However, you don't need to give money to save your soul. There's not great kingdoms you have to conquer, or however many hours of work put in during a day. No, we don't need any of those things to be permitted to the gates of heaven. Solely by having faith, by believing in God, are we redeemed? Are we saved? Are we forgiven for our many sins? I know it's controversial, but I have Anne ask you here, and as many of you know, may I share your firm beliefs? Thank you. She is quite avid and quite passionate and very vocal about her feelings. Many of you already know her strong stance against trans substination. And though you may be shocked to hear it, I completely agree. When we go to church and they still make us drink the wine and take the wafer crackers, that is just bread. It's just wine. It does not turn into the body of Christ nor the blood of Christ. Now I know. Some of you might disagree, and that's why we'll get into the debate later. But I agree with Anne Askew. I have been to many churches, one where I saw that they were using the blood of a duck, the blood of a duck, to say there was a miracle. These priests are just trying to take money, money that could be going towards the king, of course, and towards other goodly and charitable works. But these cardinals, these priests, just want to become richer and richer. And they don't care what lies they have to spread to do so. We can pray directly to God. You do not need a priest. You do not need to pray in Latin. You do not need to eat the bread or drink the wine. It's just wine. It's just bread. In fact, it was Anne Askew herself who said, If you leave the bread, the body of Christ... In a box, in three weeks' time, you will find mold on it. How can it then be the flesh of our Heavenly Father? In fact, it's blasphemous to suggest so. Or so, I believe. Of course, I'm open to all thoughts here. I know there's no staunch Catholics in the room. But we do have to be careful. As you all know, as I've stated many times, there are those who are against me. Stephen Gardner, for one. Oh, he's already tried to have me arrested once. It didn't quite work out for him. He seems to think that I'm a mere woman. But I am more than a woman. I am queen. And currently, I'm working on another book, Lamentations of a Sinner. And that will also be released in my name. And I'll dedicate it to my husband, the king, of course. It's a very fine line to walk, to be an educated woman who is vocal, strong, and intelligent. 
but also serves her husband, who is the King of England. I admit I've sometimes stepped a little bit close to the line, but I did not get this far to simply have it all thrown away. If I can be honest with all you ladies, this is not how I saw my life. My first husband, so young and handsome, so mad and cruel. I cannot say I shed a tear when he passed. And then the lovely Latimer, Lord Latimer. He was a good man, though very old and very sick. And we got on well together. I absolutely adored his children. His stepchildren became, or rather my stepchildren, became like real children to me. But then he passed on. And then for a time, a very short time, I was free. Now, many of you already know this, but be sure to keep it between us. I was developing a romantic friendship with Thomas Seymour. I loved him. I love him still. And I truly thought happiness was just within my reach. I was so excited once my mourning was over, once I could throw off my black robes, to marry Thomas Seymour, though he loved me too. But then I caught the king's eye. Oh, it was not intentional on my part. I'm no Anne Boleyn. May her poor Protestant soul rest in peace. Or even Kitty Howard, that young, poor fool. No, I just wanted to live a quiet life with my beloved. But alas, the king noticed me, and he courted me. And you cannot refuse a king, especially not this king. So, of course, I said yes, and now I'm queen, and I'm very happy. I do care for the king, and I love his children. But I thought if I have to sacrifice my love for my dear Thomas, I might as well use this position for some good. Now that I'm here, why not push forward my ideals? Why not move this reformation further? The Church of England further and further we get from the old dark ways of papistry, of Catholicism, and we embrace the new Protestant future, the brighter our lives will be. That I'm certainly sure of. But anyway, like I was saying, we're going to have a lively debate today. In just a moment, I'll let Anne ask you take over, and she'll give us one of her great sermons, which... Unfortunately, she's been banned from doing in public. But once we get rid of Stephen Gardner, it shouldn't be an issue anymore. I do look forward to hearing from her. So, let us call in the servants again. I'm sure some were already listening by the door. We can get some wine and some small ale and listen to the wonderful Anne Askew preach to us. I so look forward to hearing her sermon. Don't you? (laughs) 